Forever my 
This morning, we're going to be looking at two passages from the scripture. The first one is taken from Luke's gospel, chapter 23, verse 44 to 46. It was now about the sixth hour, and darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour. For the sun stopped shining, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. And the second passage is taken from Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19 to 25. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened for us through the curtain, that is, his body, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, 
Let us draw near to God with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. I'll read that again. For he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another onward love toward love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. Let us pray. Father God, even as we meditate on your word, we ask you that you would speak to each and every one of us in a very special way. Thank you, Lord, for sending your son, Jesus, on the cross to die for us, to die for our sins, that we may have life, life in abundance. We thank you, Lord, and God speak to us this morning. We love you so dearly, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Let's do some observation. In the books of Exodus and Leviticus, God gives instructions to Moses and tells him to set up the tabernacle according to the plan that he showed him on the mountain. Now, part of the tabernacle, the Lord told him to make a curtain that will separate the holy place from the most holy place. The most holy place is where God dwelt and the rest of the tabernacle is where the men dwelt, which means the common worshippers did not have the access to the holy of holies. Only the high priest once a year was permitted to enter the holy of holies to make atonement for the sins of the people. And how was this done? As we see in Leviticus chapter 16, the priest is to take two goats. He would cast lots, one for the Lord and one for the scapegoat. And the first goat was slaughtered for the sins of the people and the blood was used to cleanse the most holy place. Then the priest would take the scapegoat, the second goat, and he would lay his hands on this goat and he would confess over it all the sins of the people. And this scapegoat was considered unclean and it was driven away in the wilderness. And this practice happened only once a year. And as we just read from the Hebrews, the author of Hebrews tells us this. The same sacrifices were done repeatedly, year after year. No matter how many they offered, it was never sufficient to make them perfect. It was never sufficient to bring them closer to God. It was never sufficient to access God. And the question that the author asks us here is this. If the worshippers were cleansed because of the sacrifices made, would they have not stopped this practice? And all these sacrifices are an annual reminder of sins. And the Bible says it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. These sacrifices were not adequate. And all these sacrifices only reminded of your sins and it never made you perfect and it never gave you access to God. And for, the, for this reason, my dear believers, my church, for this reason, God made a provision. God saw his people. God saw you and God saw me. 
We were like sheep have gone astray. Each of us have turned to his own way. But God saw your condition. God saw my condition. God saw my friend's condition. God saw your friend's condition. And he gave his only begotten son just for you, just for me, just for your friend that you've been praying for. Just for that sister that you've been praying for a long time. Will the sister not come into the saving knowledge of Christ? And for that particular person, for you and for me and for all of us, God gave his only begotten son. And whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. God sent Jesus for you and for me. And how did he come? He was born in a humble manger. He came to seek and say what was lost. He performed miracles and wonders. His teachings were wonderful. He loved the sinners and he came to fulfill the will of God. And what is this will of God? The writer of Hebrews says, Sacrifices and offerings you did not desire, you did not like. So God, from everlasting to everlasting, this God, he prepared a body, fully God, fully man who would come down to live with us, to suffer for us, to die for us, just for you and for me. Amen. And in Luke's gospel, we see that Jesus was accused. In Luke's gospel, we see that he was accused um, uh, for, 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 for these reasons, that, that Jesus was subverting the nation, he was undermining the law and order, that Jesus was opposing payment of taxes to Caesar, that Jesus was claiming to be Christ. All of these accusations were laid upon Jesus. We see in Isaiah, Jesus was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He endured all the pain and suffering that we may have life. This morning, when we read Luke's Gospel, chapter 23, I wonder how that day would have been. Darkness came over the whole land. The sun stopped shining. The curtain was torn in two. The curtain was torn in two. And this is a message that God is giving to all of us. You, you don't need a sacrifice anymore. Now you have this free access to the throne of grace because of what God has done. He has made a provision through Jesus and he died on the cross. And that gives us the access to God. Our Savior bore our sins and we were supposed to be punished. We were, we were supposed to be on that place. But God took that place. He took everything on behalf of, behalf of us so that we might be forgiven, so that we might have an everlasting life. So on this day, on this Good Friday, even as we celebrate what Jesus had done on the cross, I want to leave you with two important reminders that we just read from Hebrews chapter 10. The first one is this, take care of your relationship with God. Take care of your relationship with God. How is your relationship with God this morning? Talking about relationship, you know, one of the thoughts that is coming into my mind is this, how does one Take good care of marriage relationship. This husband and wife, they spend time together. They love each other. They're being honest. They're being transparent with one another. And that's, that is, these are all the elements of good marriage. Spending time and loving and being honest. How is your relationship with God this morning? And the question is, how do you 
take care of your relationship with God. And we have the answer. Draw to God with sincere heart. We cannot come near to God with in any other way. Only with a sincere heart, with full assurance of faith, we can come to God. Amen. So come to God with sincerity. Come to God with genuineness. Which means you need to take care of your conscience. Psalm says in Psalm 51 verse 16 and 17, You do not delight in sacrifice, or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. My sacrifice, O oh God, is a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. You, O oh God, will not despise. God doesn't want your material things. God wants your heart. This morning, God wants your heart. Take care of the relationship with God this morning. Go before him with a sincere heart. Let me tell you this, security and stability in your life comes when you fear God, which means you, need, you must intentionally work and take care of this relationship with God. Fear God. God comes first. You take care of your relationship with God with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith. And what is this faith? What is this confidence? This is the confidence that you get in your life when you truly understand what Jesus had done on the cross for you. And this is the confidence that you have, that you have a conscience that there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. And that's the confidence. And that is your relationship with God. Come before God. Draw near to Him with a sincere heart. With a sincere heart. And the second thing the writer of Hebrews say, and we just read, this morning is this that you would take care of your fellowship with people first is take care of your relationship with God and second is take care of your fellowship with people and this is a beautiful encouragement on this day to to read the scripture and to know that he who promised is faithful amen he who promised is faithful he who promised is faithful. Therefore, hold on, hold fast, hold fast without wavering. That we confess and we profess that Jesus Christ is our Lord. And now it is not time to turn back. This is not the time to turn back. This morning, I want to encourage, don't fail. To believe the promises of God. Don't let go of your confession of the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't fail in the midst of persecution. Hold on. Don't lose heart, my friend, when disappointment and discouragement come, comes your way. Do not give up. Never give up. Because the one who promised is faithful. And this is the word for someone this morning. Hold on to Jesus and never let him go. Just like a child holding on to his father's arm. I encourage that you would hold Jesus. You would hold to Jesus. And what is this basis of this promise that he who promised is faithful? What is this promise? Because... The curtain was torn that you and I have this access to God. We don't need that sacrifices anymore. All, all those annual reminder of sins and sacrifices, all of those things we don't need anymore. The curtain was torn. 
This morning you may be wondering, how can I come to God? You may be saying, I am a sinner. I have gone far from God. I have rebelled against God. I have disobeyed God. I have done things wrong. I have done things that are, that are really, really bad and that have hurt God's heart. Draw near to Him, my friend. Draw near to God with a sincere heart. And that is what God is looking for. Good Friday is all about that, just looking at the cross. And this would not happen only on Good Friday, that you would just take this cross. Look at this cross every single day of your life, every single day, all the way, that you would draw near to him with a sincere heart. The curtain was torn into the, that you have this access to God. This morning, I want to encourage all of us, as the hymn writer says, wounded for me, wounded for me. There on the cross, he was wounded for me. Gone my transgressions, and now I'm free. All because Jesus was wounded for me. Dying for me, dying for me. There on the cross, he was dying for me. Now in his death, my redemption I see, all because Jesus was dying for me. Risen for me, risen for me. Up from the grave he has risen for me. Now evermore, from death's sting I am free, all because Jesus has risen for me. Living for me, living for me. Up in the skies, he's living for me. Daily, he's pleading and praying for me. All because Jesus is living for me. And here's another encouragement from this hymn. Coming for me. Coming for me. Soon in the air, he is coming for me. Then, with what joy his dear face I shall see. Oh, I praise him. He is coming for me. God is coming for you and for me. Till then, let us hold fast. Let us stay firm. Let us continue to do what God has called us to do. Because he who promised is faithful. Amen.